Hi everyone, it's Miss Yi from Concord International. A special hello to my Concord Pumas. We miss you all. We're so glad you're here. And today we're going to be comparing decimals. Today we're going to play Odd Pig Out. The object of the game is to earn the most points by rolling two dice without the product of those two numbers when you multiply them to equal an odd number. So on your turn, you can take your chances and keep rolling, but if you roll a product that equals an odd number, you lose your turn and your points. So today I have special dice the red's going to be player one, and the green's going to be player two. Again, you can just use normal dice um, as you'd like. So, player one is going to roll. They have a two and a three. So you have two groups of three. Two times three equals six. And player one's going to want to go again and take their chances. Player one has five times two, five groups of two, which equals 10. And it's going to try one more time, hopefully not getting an odd number as its product. Player one now has four times five, four groups of five, which is 20. And player one is probably going to say it's the end of their turn and give player two a chance. Player one could keep going, but because they have quite a few points, they're going to give player two a chance. So player one can keep the points that they have for that turn. So player two is going to roll and has rolled, as you can see, three times one, three groups of one. Now, three times one is three, and that's an odd number. So, not only does player two lose these points, it's back to player one's turn. So player one is going to roll again. Oh my goodness, and also gets one times three. So now it is player two's turn. Player two is going to roll and gets four times six. Four groups of six is 24. Player two is going to try uh, their luck and roll again. Player two gets six times four, six groups of four, which Player two knows it's also 24 and is going to pass it on to player one because they don't want to get an odd number. They don't want to get one times three again because then they would lose both these 24 points. So you want to think of a strategy as to when to give up your turn. So player two is going to say, it's your turn, player one. And I'll cross off player one's points that were odd. They're gonna start a new turn. Four times six or six times four, six groups of four is 24. As we noticed, and player one's going to chance it one time and roll again. But as you can see in this example, player one has five times one or five groups of one, which is five. So she loses both the 24 points and the five points. And now it's player two's turn, which is one times three, 
So again, player two loses this turn and these points. Uh, you can determine when you want to stop by the number of points, but we're just going to stop here. And let's see how many points player one has. So player one receives six points plus 10 points plus 20 points, which is 36 points total. And player two, even though they lost the points in the first turn and their third turn has 48 points. So player two wins, even though it looks like they rolled less because those two turns that they did have were, uh, gave them a lot of points. So I just want you to think as you play, what do you notice um, if when you're multiplying, if you get an odd number or an even number, what's more common? What strategies could you use to help determine if you want to roll again or not? So have fun and we'll talk to you soon. Enjoy. Bye. Our understanding of the decimal place value system becomes really important when we're talking about medicine in terms of dosage and also construction in terms of measurement because one misunderstanding can lead to a huge mistake. When we compare three tenths to nine hundredths using the less than, greater than, or equal sign, we can use this grid to help us. So three tenths, we need to think about what one tenth is first. So one tenth is actually one of these entire columns because 10 of these tenths make the whole. So here's one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. So I'm going to shade the rest in And if you wanted to double check, you could also think and continue on four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and then you have your whole. When we're looking at nine hundredths, one of these little squares is what is a hundredth. So here's two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, six hundredths, seven hundredths, eight hundredths, nine hundredths. And you could see that ten hundredths equals one tenth. And we haven't even made one tenth yet. Um, so nine hundredths is actually much smaller than three tenths, even though it might sound like a bigger number, but three tenths is actually greater than nine hundredths. Here's another way to look at it. If you have a circle that's divided into 10 pieces, what would the shaded area of this uh, circle be? This would be known as five tenths and as you can see it is also known as a half right that's half of the circle but if we were divided were to divide the same circle into a hundred pieces this would be known as five hundredths so the difference between five tenths and five hundredths is quite significant. Five hundredths is much smaller. In 62 hundredths, notice that we have six tenths and two small hundredths pieces. There are no thousandths. In 600 and two thousandths, 
notice that there are still six tenths, but there are no hundredths, yet there are two extremely small thousandths pieces. So if you take a look at this bar, and it's if it's representing 0 to 1, this red section are, um, is tenths. So this would be 3 tenths. And this blue section, which is broken down into 100 little pieces, it would be known as 30 hundredths, which is the same as 3 tenths. Here we're going to continue working on our place value with decimals by filling out a chart to help us then order decimals from least to greatest. The first thing that I'm going to do is fill in my chart so I first have my ones, my whole, then I have my tenths, the hundredths is already labeled, and then I have my thousandths. What I'm noticing is that there are no holes here. So I'm going to put zeros in my ones spot. Then I'm going to start writing down the numbers. So my first number is 7 tenths. Then I have 683 thousandths. Then I just have 9 thousandths. And then I have 68 hundredths. When I'm deciding to order them from least to greatest, because I already know that there are no ones, I'm going to take a look at the tenths place. I'm noticing that nine thousandths has no tenths, so that's while every other number has a tenth place, so I know because a tenth has the greatest value in these decimal place values that nine thousandths is going to be my smallest number. So what's next is I can tell that there are two different number with six tenths. If I continue looking over to and that has the same value. So I can go over to the hundredths next and I'm noticing that they also have eight hundredths. So I have to go over to my next smallest value, which is the thousandths, and there are three thousandths in 683 thousandths, but there are no thousandths in 68 hundredths. So when I think back to my grid um, and the cubes and the flats and the rods, so that means that the 683 thousandths has just three little tiny, tiny cubes more than the 68 hundredths. So the 68 hundredths doesn't have those teeny, teeny, three teeny, teeny cubes, so it's going to be the next number, uh, the next smallest number, followed by the 683 thousandths. And then that finally leaves us with 7 tenths as the largest number. So it's kind of interesting that when we actually read the numbers again, 7 tenths may seem like it's the smallest number, but it's actually the largest number because 7 tenths can actually also be seen as 700 thousandths if we were to just have our zeros there. 
When we're looking at the last bottom problem, it's also saying write a number that is less than 1 and larger than 99 hundredths. So think about how you would model that. So you could have 99 hundredths and then divide all those hundredths into thousandths pieces. And if you were to write, add anything through the thousandths, uh, 991 thousandths would be less than 1, 992 thousandths would be less than 1, 993 thousandths would be less than 1, all the way over to 999 thousandths. And then that next number um, could be a whole. Take a look at this image. Who do you think is going to win, runner A or runner B? If you're thinking runner B, you're probably correct because runner B is closer to the finish line than runner A. We can use this thinking uh, to help us when we're rounding and use what we know about rounding whole numbers to help with decimals when we're rounding. Here we're going to compare 7 tenths and 8 hundredths by plotting the points on the number line using the less than, equal to, or greater than symbol. 7 tenths can be shown in fraction form like this. If you make it 10 times more, it is equal to 70 hundredths, which when you think back to decimal form is 70 hundredths, which we can find here. So, 7 tenths can be plotted right here. 8 hundredths can also be thought of in decimal form like this. So when we are thinking of plotting 8 hundredths on this number line, we have to notice that there are no tenths yet. Okay, And 10 hundredths is the same as one tenth. So if we zoom in between zero and one tenth, we can see that eight hundredths will be between. Now again, I'm going to write ten hundredths as one tenth or ten hundredths as a reminder that these are equivalent. So, one hundredth can be found here, which means that eight hundredths could be found approximately here. So, on our number line, we can plot it right here. So, even though eight hundredths may sound like a larger number than seven tenths, it's actually a much smaller number. So looking at this number line, I'm noticing that we have zero on one end and one tenth on the other end. We're also trying to locate point N. So think about what each of these sections might represent. So if we were to break down one tenth into 10 smaller sections, each section would be worth one hundredth. So here's one hundredth, two hundredth, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, six hundredths, seven hundredths, eight hundredths, nine hundredths, and then ten hundredths makes one tenth. So what could point N be? If we were to break down this section even smaller, it would be into thousandths. And because we can see that point N is past the halfway mark, and it's pretty close to four hundredths, Point N might be 
37 thousandths, 38 thousandths, or 39 thousandths. So if we were to round point n to the nearest tenth, remember that our tenths are at the end of our number line. We can see that point n is actually closer to zero tenths. It's a little tricky, but do you see that? And then if we were to round point n to the nearest hundredth, you can see that n is between three hundredths and four hundredths. And n is clearly closer to four hundredths. So when we round point n to the nearest hundredth, we can say four hundredths. We're going to use our knowledge of rounding of whole numbers to help us with rounding with decimals. Here, we're going to use the open number line to show how to round 3 and 174 thousandths to the nearest hundredth. So the first thing we need to do is look at to our hundredths place. So I see we have 3 and 17 hundredths, um, and that's going to be on one end of the number line and on the other number end of the number line is going to be 318 hundredths. Then we can write in our thousandths in between. So we have 3 and 171 thousandths, 3 and 172 thousandths, 3 and 173 thousandths, 3 and 174 thousandths, and we're going to continue on 3 and 175 thousandths, 176 thousandths, 177 thousandths, 178 thousandths, 179 thousandths, and then we finally get to our 18 hundredths, our 3 and 18 hundredths. So let me quickly highlight the number that we're going to round and that we're going to round it to hundredths place. So here is our 3 and 174 thousandths. I'm going to place tick marks on our number line just so we can see it just a little bit better. And as you can see now, uh, 3 and 174 thousandths is closer to 3 and 17 hundredths. Looking at these next problems, I will show you another way to consider it. We want to round 6 and 359 thousandths to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to underline the hundredths place. I'm going to look next door, and that means I'm going to have to round up. So I have 6 and 300 and 6, I'm sorry, 6 and 36 hundredths. Then on the next one, I have 6 and 359 thousandths again, but we're going to round it to the nearest. Tenth. So here is my tenth. I'm going to look next door, and again, I have to round that pl the tenth place value up. So I have six and four tenths. Finally, I have fifty-one thousandths, and we want to round it to the nearest tenth. So my tenth has nothing, but if I look next door, it does say I have to round up. So one up from zero is one. So I can say that 51 thousandths rounded to the nearest tenth is actually one tenth. So that means 51 thousandths is closer to one-tenth, then it is to zero.